What's up, guys? We've got a black and white game from SPL that I went back for because I thought it was good. So uh, we've got We Three Kings and Dice, two solid, solid black and white players. Uh, Dice is a bit lengthier track record in the tier, but uh, We Three Kings, also known as Moxie Infinite. I'm just going to call him Moxie because it's a lot easier to say. Um, there's no slouch in it either. He's put up some results. And, uh, yeah, we've got two solid-looking sand teams. I believe uh, Moxie is running something... Well, it looks kind of like um, something McMegan used, which looked kind of like something Heist used. I know that might not mean anything to you, but basically uh, Heist, like these um, these bulky sand teams with Reuniclus, and I think that was McMegan's inspiration for making this one. So... Uh, I think it's solid. Rotom gives it a lot of flexibility. That Heist didn't have that. He had a bulky Poison Heal Breloom, but uh, I like Rotom because it helps a lot against various things like Tornadus, uh, extra Zam. It's not a great Zam check, but like it helps, and every little bit helps against Zam. And uh, back up against Keldeo, and you have to outplay Keldeo a little bit, but uh, it's nothing unreasonable. Uh, some special defense EVs on Rainclass might not be bad either. Dice is running something pretty Dice-like uh, with the Milotic. He's a big fan of that Pokemon. And Magnazone is more mainstream than ever on uh, Sand teams especially, really enabling things like uh, certain Gliscor variants. And, of course, Scarf Excadrill is a great cleaner. So without further ado, let us begin. So um, apologies for that. I don't know where all my tabs are. So, uh, we've got the Lando lead against the Amoongus lead. So, there doesn't really look to be a sleep talker on Moxie's team, if not Landorus itself. So, something's going to bite it. And uh, nothing really scares Re uh, Amoongus on that team, because it's going to be a special defensive heat train, obviously. I mean, feasibly, it could be a, uh, a you know, like a sub heat train, like Rock Spike Sparrow, but... Realistically, I don't think so. God damn, that's loud, sorry. Um, anyway, so Dice is also thinking, hey, that might be Sleep Talk, so I'm going to HP Ice, and he chips the T-Tar a little bit. Uh, nope, so he gets Ice Beamed. So uh, we learned a couple things. First of all, probably Scarf Lando, although that wasn't that difficult to surmise at Team Preview. Second off... Maybe Scarf T-Tar, because I forgot to mention it could also be Rock's Tar and like a Sub-Tran. But uh, Scarf Tar is pretty popular these days because, you know, Thunderous and Tornadus are just so dangerous. And it can check things that it usually wouldn't, you know, check, per se, like uh, Keldeo, you know? Like, it's not like Tarantar checks Keldeo, but, you know, it gives it the option to... Superpower. Anyway, uh, then we see a switch to Milotic as We Three Kings, or Moxie goes to Heatran. So the Toxic there has uh, a few purposes. First off, you want to Toxic it so it's taking damage as soon as possible. And Toxicing and then using Stealth Rock gets more damage on Milotic than uh, Stealth Rock and then Toxic. Second off, uh, Dice really likes Magic Coat Milotic. And, uh, therefore, if you Magic Coat a Toxic back at a Heatran, then it doesn't do anything. But if you Magic Coat Stealth Rock, then that can be kind of annoying. So, it, uh, it's not like Moxie's team minds Stealth Rock at all. But, it, you know, if you can get away with not giving him rocks for free, then that helps. Because he, his uh, Stealth Rocker is obviously Tyranitar. So, uh, this also might point to the idea that it's it was Rock's T-Tar, although, um... The Ice Beam there was quizzical if it wasn't Scarf, because Ice Beam Scarf Tar is good. But if it's rocks, you just get up those rocks and get at least some use out of it. And uh, rather than, you know, trying to nail the Gliscor, which is not the likely initial switch either. Um, because it's not like you really need that Toxic Orb activated to switch into Heatran Lava Plume. And uh, Heatran runs HP Ice a lot, so... Uh, these days. So that was uh, somewhat questionable. Anyway, uh, Rotom comes in and gets burned. Um, my loading recovers because it's got massive special defense holes, which won't do shit, and therefore the Will-O-Wisp won't go anywhere. But Toxic is racking up, so uh, Moxie goes for another Will-O-Wisp. That was a good move. 
does not connect with the Amoongus, and when it's at sub-50 and burned, he does not want to take a Giga Drain, no matter how specially defensive he might be, so he's just going to, not even Volt Switch, he's going to Hard Switch to Heath Grand. Uh, just so it wouldn't be blocked by uh, Gliscor. So even if Gliscor does get switched to, at least he can protect and get two rounds of leftovers. And the stun spore misses, so you know, something. Uh, minor hex on both sides, although trans speed is not likely to be a game breaker here. It's probably going to be slower than the Magma Zone regardless. Uh, so it would only be for the sake of full paralysis. So uh, the rocks do go up. Um, Moxie was pretty ad pretty impressively patient on that. I'm not sure if he really needed to be because you know not being not having the Rotom burned would have been nice. Since uh, and you know if he if he magic coat stealth rock he magic coat stealth rock once he's toxic, if he just keeps doing it, eventually you're gonna get your rocks, and you know he can't do it forever. So I think it might have been worth it to do it. And, you know he just lost fifty percent of his Rotom's health. That could be crucial in dealing with Gliscor down the stretch. But, uh, yeah, that's, it, it worked out. And now there's still no rocks up, although I'm not sure how, you know, how much it's going to impact uh, Moxie's game. Uh, Moxie makes a nice move here, going to Rotom as Dice goes to Tarantar. So he's really pushing this. I'm going to punish him for using Stealth Rock angle, which is uh, interesting. I guess... It's not a bad idea because um, even though rocks aren't a huge, huge deal on either side, then it can be nice um, since Dice does have the option of spin while Moxie does not. So, um, you know, it's it's some really heads-up play for Moxie. I really like that. Anyway, so he's going to punish that Tarantar if it goes for the rocks, not by burning, but by pain splitting so that it can stick around to pull its shenanigans later. And again, not risking a Volt Switch into Gliscor, just going to Heatran. Uh, Moxie making a lot of really great, well, he can do this, but if he does, I'm going to get at least something out of it. And that gives him more options on the stretch, and I really like that. So, uh, Milo coming back in as Heatran's particularly going to just fire off a Lava Plume, get more leftovers, be that impossible to kill prick it always is. Uh, he's got to be careful with his Ferrothorn, but he's got the tools to dance around Dice's Pokemon without really relying on it. Because, um, you know, if he misuses it, he'll just go 6-5 down for nothing. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm enjoying this. And uh, he, di he didn't burn the T-Tar because uh, the idea to punish the T-Tar uh, earlier was, well, you can get up your rocks... You know, for whatever good that'll do you, but then you're burned. You can't deal with my Reuniclus that well. Uh, and Reuniclus is a pretty big threat, so. But he decided to take the safer route and uh, paint split for the Amoongus, because keeping Rotom healthy is more important than uh, burning either of those two, because he can always burn those two later. But he can't, you know, he doesn't want to be put in a shitty spot with Rotom trying to, you know, get a paint split off against the Protect Gliscor or something. So, um, but yeah, uh, Dice did not want to take that burn, so he got the best of both worlds. And he's going to get another split off here. Rotom's just a monstrously annoying Pokemon. This game, a uh, little bit of a spoiler, this Rotom, and something else you'll see later, uh, well, I'm not going to say that Rotom, you know, became a trend in Black and White, because that's like saying, hey, did you know that Jirachi, Heatran, Keldeo, Tyranitar, Garchomp, and Latios, or Owen oh, Landorus, and Gliscor, or really really good but you know it's uh, it's it, it definitely picked up in popularity for its ability to do just what you're seeing here against these kinds of santines which are really good so uh he's going to uh decide well i guess he uh this kind of switched up a little in that hole being really careful with rotom's health because he decides you know i really want that burn i'm kind of surprised he did that i thought he would just Keep this cycle up, because eventually he's going to be able to pop that Will-O-Wisp off on Amoongus on the Switch, and then he's just going to be home free. So I am surprised he did that. I'm not sure I agree with that entirely. And now Ferrothorn's coming in. So I think the move there, here, could have been Heatran as well. He's not getting as much use out of it as it can be, as he could be. Um, because... Uh, yeah, it just seems like it's it threatens so much damage, and Ferrothorn just kind of gets wasted here. I mean, the spike 
Yeah, yeah, I mean, obviously you're going to go for the spikes, you know. Oh, wow, you least see the magazine, big freaking deal. But, uh, yeah, so the zone is not going to kill, it's not specs, but that just means it's a sunny day, and it's not rain anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, Dice makes a good move here, going for a sunny day. It was pretty reasonable to assume that it was not going to be knock off Barathorn, which is getting more and more popular, even in places where it doesn't uh, really fit. But uh, knock off Ferrothorn doesn't make sense here because you got Reuniclus for other Ferrothorn spike shit, and uh, not to mention Rotom tends to burn other Ferrothorn a lot. So, and the protect is really good. So Dice made the right move there. Um, I mean, even if we three kings predicted it, then. It's, you know, big deal. So it takes some more leech seed damage. So we're temporarily sand free, although that's probably not going to last. And uh, Moxie goes back to his Lando, and here comes Gliscor almost surely. Uh, nope. Nope, I thought uh, he might do it, but... And therefore that might be reason to... Uh, oh, I just... It's Earthquake. Um, I guess not. So yeah, Dice was really not... Feeling like, hey, let me get my huge threat Gliscor HP iced on the switch because, uh, you know, it's a Gliscor is a big threat. So that was very conscientious of him. But uh, so now we're seeing uh, from Moxie that, hey, you know, this, this Gliscor is kind of a pain. And uh, it has been from Team Preview. He's been kind of just. I mean, it was fine up until this guy came around. With with Rotom so low, it's definitely a problem. Although Facade, Spadef variants, or, you know, either or can be noxious regardless. And now we see Reuniclus come in. And, and generally that's, that's you know, a warning sign because uh, Gliscor tends to switch into Reuniclus to try and check it a lot. And uh, so... And, yep, we see HP Ice, so that turns Reuniclus from a Gliscor food into a Gliscor check, since full max defense doesn't take shit from So that was really nice. And that was the other thing I mentioned that became a trend. Uh, it's, it's become really popular uh, ever since. So, Dice is finally going to get up his rocks, so, you know, passive punishment, and uh, Rotom... So that means, first of all, that means Heatran's not going to switch in for infinite leftovers, whatever it feels like. And it also means Rotom is dead. No more paint split shit. So, another thing to mention here is that um, Ferrothorn will have its uh, game game presence nullified as soon as x pulls out that spin. So... Uh, what we're going to see here is Moxie doing everything possible to squeeze as much leverage as he can out of those spikes. Not quite, you know, not the easiest, not as easy as it sounds, since, uh, you know, Gliscor does not really take spikes damage, but everything else does. So he's trying to get as much done as possible with that spike before it gets spun. And uh, here we see something somewhat questionable. I d I, I'm not really understanding why Magnezone needed to be sacrificed here when it, there was no risk of HP ice. Toxic Lava Plume stuff our Keytran. And Protect, obviously. So, uh, I think he could have just gone to that and preserved the zone. I mean, Weakening Tran is nice for Amoongus, I, I guess. You know, Amoongus, that just gets completely destroyed by Reuniclus. Uh, I'm not sure that was a uh, wiser... A really wise movie. I don't know. I think that was a needless sack. But uh, now the response is going to be either Gliscor or Milotic. Probably Gliscor to put the pressure on. But the pressure, you know, wh whether the pressure really exists or not, is kind of contestable now, because Reuniclus turns out is a is a stop to Gliscor, which is not something Dice was counting on. As you can see, that earthquake is doing absolutely kittens. So, and, uh, extra drill, this does mean that it's dropping, you know, Psychic or Focus Blast, or both, um, so it can at least be, uh, used to, uh, use as extra drill entry, as you see here, um, although, if that's actually going to help 
hold off the Reuniclus long term. I mean, the hazards help in wearing down the Tyranitar, especially. Uh, so. But I, I'm not sure if it, that's going to be uh, all that's needed. Although, I, I will say, if it's dropping Focus Blast, it is going to really need those spikes, especially because Heatran's at 1% after rocks. So, you know, you have to pretty much get it in on a U-turn from Amoongus, and uh, I don't think Dai's ever going to give that to you. So, uh, Moxie's kind of in a tough spot here. He's really got to make use of those hazards. So, here he keeps up the pressure uh, with Lando using U-turn. That was... This is really nice stuff. Um, so now we're going to close this in again, and we've got that whole... Well, you know, Dice can kind of maybe sack something. I mean, just get the T-Tar in somehow. Um, or, you know, wear down the Excadrill, because, you know, it doesn't take shit from uh, rocks, but it takes 12% from spikes, so... And uh, Moxie makes another great move here, uh, going back to Landorus, even if Gliscor stayed in, not that he was going to. I mean, God forbid, but, you know, then Lando intimidates it, and he can just U-turn back, or even threaten HP Ice. So that was really nice. Uh, so now we're getting into the cycle again, as he's almost surely going to U-turn, because nope, he's just going to Earthquake. Generally in those positions where uh, it's, I'm not going to say desperation, but kind of desperation, or d generally playing from behind, then you're going to see the guy just keep pressing that advantage over and over, but he thought... Dice is not is gonna you know stay in and try to make me look silly here, but um he catches on and goes to Reuniclus, whereas some players might have tried to earthquake again, but Dice has uh, shown he's not going to be the kind of guy who goes back to Excadrill on that turn. Instead, he just ice fangs, keeps it safe, and uh, here comes Drill one more time, and no, he calm mines. So now if Drill uh, spins, uh, he's going to be punished with two more Calm Minds afterwards, and uh, even if that last move is, you know, psychic, then, well, Tarantar's at 53, I'm not so sure this is advisable, and he's going to HP Ice the Extra Drill, so. This really isn't looking uh, fantastic for Moxie. Now here comes Moongus. I mean, even if it's clear smog, then, you know, big deal. And we see Thunder, so that's what he's going to be attacking the Tyranitar with. Although with no hazards, then it's not so good. Here comes Tran. Hopefully on a clear smog. That was his, like, other opportunity to switch in. But no, uh, Dice is going to be safe going to Tranitar, not risking letting Amoongus eat anything, and that would have been safer entry into the Reuniclus. Um, as uh, then, you know, switching in on the Thunder, which was unrevealed, but you never know. So Amoongus was really being used just to suss it out a little more. Uh, so uh, that was a good move, also prevents any fuckery from Tran. Uh, he's gonna get the double protect though, and that means that Crunch is not going to be killing because Heatran, it's not a physical tank, but it, it is really bulky. So, but it's Earthquake after all. So, Earthquake trains are black white, it's underrated. I've been using that for a while. Um, hitting Toxic Rogue is good. Hitting Tentacruel when it's trying to fuck with you and spin is enormous. That it's so good. And uh, the extra hit on Jirachi is always welcome, as well as, of course, Heatran. So here comes Landorus again. Um, so now this is becoming once more the game of Reuniclus trying to wear down the Tyranitar. That is really all that's mattering. Amoongus is being used as the switch in here to the U-turn uh, because there's no sense in risking Gliscor to an HP ice needlessly. Although there, there is actually something to be said for that because if Gliscor gets HP iced, then uh, you pursuit the... Well, assuming it's pursuit, then you pursuit the Lando with uh, the T-Tar, and then the T-Tar kind of wins. So I actually kind of wonder if that wasn't the move. Uh, of course, if it's not Pursuit Tar, then, you know, it's um, a moot point, but that is something to think about. So, of course, uh, 
you know, then Lendo still might live, and then he can kind of make your life miserable with Earthquake. So, you know, maybe not. Anyway, uh, it's going for the Paralysis route, so now, you know, hitting Thunders through Paralysis. Yikes. And, uh, this is a Mold Breaker drill, so no Sand Force boosts, but, you know, still going to be hitting hard with Iron Head and Prepare Flinch, not the likeliest thing in the world. Just really giving himself all the odds that he can get. Uh, and that Iron Head is just going to chunk the hell out of Reuniclus. Yeah, um, we, we know what's going on here now. Oh, and it turns out it is Pursuit, and uh, he was thinking, well, I've kind of got a bank on this thing not having that shit, but, and there's a, crun a Thunder Crit, yikes, and that is going to be what turned this game around. Now, uh, th there were a lot of odds going into that, and uh, still not over because of Paralysis, and but now it is. So that crit is pretty much the game right there. Um, yeah, it wasn't over in one way or another. Although it definitely seemed like a sudden conclusion to the drawn-out battle we saw here. Um, but I think, uh, yeah, because he can still switch. He could have paralyzed the T-Tar. whole lot of stuff going on. Of course he could have missed, obviously, but... It was just uh, one of many things that went on, but that was a uh, that was a rough one because it, it was looking really good for dice up until that point. Um, so yeah, this one uh, that's how this one's going to finish. So uh, I think the, the the takeaway here was really preserving Pharaoh and getting as much damage as possible on the Trantar somehow. You, you really really needed those hazards, and throwing away Pharaoh was a little. Early. I mean, having the Rotom Sack to the drill spin once was nice, but it was really going to be hard to just completely deny it. Um, so I, I think that Pharaoh was a little rushed. I think the Rotom thing was uh, could have been handled a little better, but it's just one guy's opinion. Yeah, I think if he uh, preserves a little more, he wouldn't have had to... It wouldn't have come down to that, but... Uh, yeah, so... This was an important game for SPL uh, in terms of uh, dictating, showing how the meta is and showing where it's going forward. And um, yeah, it was it was a great battle overall. I, I really enjoyed this one. Just, uh, just tremendous playing on both sides. Um, I mean, some stuff I don't agree with, but overall it was a well well thought out game, uh, well thought out teams. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will catch you next time.